Now consider this example, a file of 16384 records, each record is of size 32 bytes, in it the key field is of size 6 bytes. The file is ordered on a non-key field and the file organization is unspanned. The size of the block is 1024 bytes and the size of the block pointer is given as 10 bytes. If the secondary index is built on the key field of the file and a multi-level index is used to store the secondary index, the number of first level and second level blocks in the multi-level index are. Given there are 16384 records and the size of the record is 32 bytes, in it the size of the key field is 6 bytes and the file is ordered on some non-key field of the file. So the file is ordered on a non-key field whose value is not unique for every record in the file. And the secondary index is built on the key field of the file. So if the file is ordered on the non-key field, definitely the file will be unordered on the key field of the file whose value is unique for every record within the file. Thus, we build a secondary index for the key field of the file. And the multi-level index is built on the secondary index. We know that every index will be ordered on its key field. Now we are having a secondary index on the key field of the file. So definitely this key will be unique for every index record in this secondary index. Thus it's possible to build a primary sparse index using the block anger method for the secondary index. Hence we can get the benefit of the multi-level indexing. We know the secondary index is some secondary access method for which some primary access methods may already exist. So for this ordering non-key field, there may be some primary access methods such as clustering field. So we need not bother about that. We are building the multi-level index on the secondary index and this secondary index will be having one index record for every record in the file. So what will be the number of entries in the secondary index? the number of records in the database file 16384 entries index entries will be there in the secondary index now to find out the size of each entry the size of the key field is given as 6 bytes and the size of the pointer is given as 10 bytes hence the size of each index entry is 10 plus 6 16 bytes the block size is also given as 1024 bytes. Then how many index entries can be kept in a single block? 1024 divided by 16, 64 index entries can be kept in a single block. Thus if one block can keep 64 index entries then for 16384 entries how many blocks are required? 16384 divided by 64, 256 blocks are required to keep the secondary index or to keep the first level index. Next we build the next level, the second level index for the first level index. And here we can use primary sparse indexing since this index is ordered on the key field of the file of the index file for which the key field is unique for each and every index record. Thus, how many entries will be there in the second level index? For each block there will be one entry in the index. The total number of entries is 256. And size of each entry is the same it is 16 bytes and hence the number of entries which can kept in a single block it is also the same 64 the 64 entries can be kept in a single block so for 256 entries how many blocks are required 256 divided by 64 four blocks are required for the second level index 
Thus, the f first level index require 256 blocks and the second level index require 4 blocks.